Morning, everybody. Me again. Here with motorcycle legend John Gessner out in Tianaway, Washington. And today we're going to ride Miller Peak. And John, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, man. All right, fantastic. Well, without further ado, let's take a ride. <laughs> Everybody, once again, welcome to beautiful and slightly damp Tianaway, Washington. This place finally got some much needed rain, and thank goodness for that. So, on our way up to Miller Peak, which we've actually been to before, don't tell anybody, but this ride was just so much fun, and my wife hasn't ridden it yet, so figured I'd bring her on up here and she's trailing right behind me and I got Mr. John Gessner who's well he's been gone for 30 seconds so he's probably about a mile and a half out front by now no point in keeping up with that kid anyway might as well go do something else so just thought I'd come back up here for one good reason really even though we've done this before it was just on the last season of Enduro Radio when we filmed uh, I want to say it was Into the Unknown, and that was actually a really fun ride. We did this trail for that reason, because we knew nothing about it, and it was a place we'd never been, so, you know, we figured, what the hell? But I thought about it, and I said, well, if we like this trail so much, why not just come back out here? It's not like, you know, we don't have time to do it, or we need to wait longer, and I just couldn't figure out a good reason why we should go somewhere else when this trail goes to one of the more beautiful spots I've really ever seen. So here we go. And uh, in talking to my good buddy, Gary Henderson, who is more affectionately known as uh, Father Gary, for a good reason. This man was the officiant at our wedding. And he is one of my just lifetime best buddies. So. He's not a pastor, he was not an officiant, <laughs> and one day I just went online and I got him ordained at the old, you know, internet church of the baby Jesus or whatever, and the guy married us. Not only that, he also paid for all the food for our wedding. And get this, it was his birthday, and he didn't tell anybody about it. One of his kids had to tell me, so it was actually kind of nice. So we had a wedding slash uh, Father Gary birthday party, and it was awesome. He's a really good man. If you ever encounter this guy, he might be a grumpy Gus, but inside that chest is filled with a good heart, and we love him to death. But in talking to him last week, he kind of laid a little bit of knowledge on me as far as, you know, we'll call it a life lesson or what have you. As far as time, we were discussing trying to make a plan to help my mom out with something because she lives way up there and I live way down here. And I made the comment about, you know, Gary, we generally in our life, depending on the circumstance, we either have time or we have money. Very rarely do we have both. And Gary piped up as hard as he works, and believe me, he works really, really hard at everything he does. He said to me that he doesn't give a shit about money. He's like, you can lose it, and you can go make more. That's not a big deal. But time is irreplaceable. And I kind of it kind of blew me back a little bit because, I mean, we all obviously know that we're on a clock, right? So what we've got to spend is what we got to spend, but we don't know how much we have. And it's not like we can go to a time bank and get any more. So this conversation, oh man, it's rocky. This conversation was on Wednesday last week. Today's Sunday. And for whatever reason, I cannot get that conversation out of my head. Because Gary was absolutely right. And it's one of those things 
I wish I could appreciate that phrase a lot more, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. But, you know, when we're in our mid and early 20s, shit, the only thing we appreciate is, you know, cars, women, and beer. That's about the end of that. I think I can speak for most of us guys out there in that regard, but, you know, that changes over time as everything comes with age. But it brought me back to the old point of, of spending your time and why that I will never understand. We spend so much time, remember the time that we cannot get back doing things that we don't want to do or that aren't our ideal uh, to-dos of the day, if you will. And I mean, we all have responsibilities, sure, but why do we spend a majority of our time just kinda either doing stuff we don't wanna do or lounging around or, you know, just not getting out and, and living it up, so to speak. And when I mean living it up, I mean, it's whatever that living it up means to you, whether it's this or tennis or baseball or laying on the grass, it doesn't matter. Why are you not out doing it all the time? And for that matter, I can take a little bit of my own medicine in that regard, because I find times where, you know, shit, I just don't want to go. Maybe I'm tired, maybe I'm sore, I don't know. Maybe it's too hot, because it's been 100 degrees every G-dang day for, God, I can't even remember now. But it's one of those deals that I think we should take uh, a little more to heart and not take our time here on this earth for granted so much and spend more of our time, you know, basically out riding our bike, whether it's physically or metaphorically. If you're not a bike rider, get out and do what you love, man, because, you know, you only got so much of this, so you might as well get at it. And that's, again, why we do this every weekend. Because we can, and because we want to. Because both me and my wife have a very clear understanding of, you know, this this time we have on Earth. And we've had this conversation before in the past where it chokes me up just to, you know, just to say it out loud, but, <coughs> excuse me, there will come a time, whether it's 10 years from now or 60 years from now or what have you, that, you know, one of us, will be without the other because of, you know, circumstance. Very rarely do do couples age and pass on at the very same time. So, you know, that's always kind of a, kind of a rough thought. But it is that rough thought that keeps pushing us harder and harder to spend our time, our very precious time, doing the things we love together. And with the people we love, mind you. With our buddy Johnny, who's oh, probably in the next county by now. Uh, and with the rest of our group, you know, the seven. We love those people more than anything. So, of course we want to spend our time doing this fun sport with them. It's just, it's the whole thing about it. It's the trip, it's the drive there, it's the things you see. It's the ride itself, it's the, the mountain peaks you get to maybe, or the the beautiful scenery or the waterfalls or it doesn't matter you know it's it's the journey to the destination so that you can have the journey and that trumps all else you guys i will never ever forget that and i'll never take it for granted not as long as i live and i'm very thankful to be cognizant of that fact because too many times it's still currently today Am I watching people essentially just kind of waste their lives away? Whether it's, you know, drugs or alcohol or just simple complacency. Maybe they're not, you know, amped up to go do anything. Maybe they just kind of become homebodies after a while. Which, you know what? If that's what makes you comfortable, that's great. But I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, Jesus, look at this. There is a lot of life out there to be had, you guys. A whole shit ton. This world is enormous. And there are so many things to do and see. Why you would not want to get out and see absolutely as much of it as you possibly could, I will never understand. Never. 
And that's one of the reasons I don't hike. Because to hell with hiking. <laughs> I hope you enjoy it and keep her at it, but I'm not I'm not hoofing my ass uphill. No sir. Nah. -uh. Plus, you know, covering up ground. You know, by the time we do this whole loop, get to the Miller Peak and get all the way back to the van, the hikers that we just passed about 15 minutes ago, well, shoot, they're probably gonna be right about where I'm at now. Maybe a little further. So it's about getting there and covering the ground and getting her done and, and just enjoying it, you guys. You gotta enjoy it. And if you don't, go do something else. But don't do nothing. That's the worst thing you can do. And I've been fortunate enough to have the people in my life to be the example ahead of me to learn these things from. And that's, again, one of those things I don't think I'll ever take for granted. And I hope you don't either. And if you're anything like me, and if you're watching this episode right now, you probably are something like me. And I appreciate you for that fact. Man, this is loose today. So don't let her go, you guys. Just keep at it. And that's what I'm gonna do. But don't go away. We're gonna be back in about five seconds because I promised you a ride to the peak. And a ride to the peak you shall have. So we'll see you real soon. Hold tight. Okay, everybody. Here it is. Run up to the top. Kind of loose, a little kind of bumpy, but there's a good line in it. Just gotta stay on it. Third gear usually does the trick. Just don't stop. <laughs> For the love of God. Hot damn! We made it, everybody. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to Miller Peak. I know I promised you a view, but it kind of looks like Cheech and Chong rolled through here because <laughs> it's up in smoke. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so thanks again for joining us on the ride and the rant today. And, you know, don't forget to spend time that we have left doing what you love with the people you love. And that's what I'm going to go do. So as always, like as always, <laughs> take care of yourselves out there, everybody. And damn it, take care of each other. Cheers.